characteristic striped pattern. And the richer the man was, the more elaborate the striped pattern would be. Uh, the vest would be a short black, simple wooden vest with big brass buttons. And the whole uh, getup would be tied around with a woolen woven belt, wound around the body multiple ties, uh, times with a knot on the side. The shirt is similar to the uh, women's because it's also very big and billowing, but it and it also has the wovey rose in, uh, in, embroidered on it. And the hat is made of felt, and you also see the roses and uh, flower motifs repeated there with glass beads. Thank you very much. Next up, we have our costumes from the Lublin region. Uh, these costumes are also called Krzanowska. Uh, they're, this couple is from the city of Lublin in southeastern Poland. And the costumes are unique because of their horizontal stripes, which are not very often found in costumes, and bright, bright colors. You can see them from a mile away. I mean, come on. And they are shown especially well when dancing a dynamic pole. Do you want to give us an example of how that would look? Just real quick. Or at least spin her around. Let's see what the skirt looks like. That's what I'm talking about. Exactly. So, <laughs> so Natalia here is showing us an example of what a young, unmarried girl of looking with her. So the headpiece, uh, you can see she has some flowers uh, pinned to the back of her head with colorful silk ribbons going down her back. If she were married, she would trade that in for a, a tied headkerchief. The blouse is sewn of linen and embroidered with the characteristic cross-stitch pattern of the region. The corset, black velvet, as usual, um, and embroidered with ribbons, buttons, and sequins, lined at the bottom with what needs to be at least 15 of these flaps, which we call yenzichki. No Lublin girl would have, would have a vest with anything less than 15. Well, oh my bad. <laughs> the skirt is sewn with uh, colors that match the vest, um, and the pleated fabric, as you saw before, would bell out beautifully to create that sort of bell-like shape when the girl would dance. The apron would actually be uh, sewn in colors that would uh, contrast with the rest of the costume, but would also be richly decorated with ribbon and lace. And here we have Maciek, an example of what a typical young, marriageable bachelor of Lublin would wear. So the hat is a straw boater-like hat, decorated with flowers and sometimes peacock feathers, which indicates to the ladies that he is single and filled. <laughs> the pants are sewn of a black wool, or a lighter fabric, whatever is comfortable. And the vest is short, made of black satin or velour, richly decorated with stripes of ribbons and embroidery similar to that of the girls. So you see that they're from the same place. Uh, and the shirt is also just like a Joshua costume, worn untucked with the belt uh, wrapped around it. Thank you very much. And now we would like to sing a song. Fashion. 
On the head, you see that she has no flowers or head covering because typically an unmarried girl just wouldn't wear anything on her head. But once she got married, she would wear a richly embroidered silk head kerchief tied at the neck. Her corset, only worn for special occasions, <laughs> is made of a uh, thick velvet and is tied with a large red ribbon bow and richly embroidered with glass beads and sequins in motifs and patterns that emulate their surroundings. So notice that her flowers look like a mountain thistle or something like that. Her skirt is made with a pattern of roses that would be large at the bottom and small at the top, which sort of makes them unique to the Guralski region. Her blouse and her petticoats, if we saw them while she was spinning, are made of a white eyelet uh, uh, embroidered uh, cotton. And the shawl that she's wearing is worn either for warmth or sometimes for decoration. And the color would indicate the seriousness of the occasion. So if she were going to a funeral or to church, she would wear a darker color. But because she's clearly going to either a wedding or a party, she wears a lighter color. And you see that she has layers and layers of red beads, uh, which of course indicate her status or wealth. Coral, real coral beads were so valued in the Guralski region that women would hand them down from mother to daughter. And here we have Tomek. Our Gura showing us, the, <laughs> showing us the typical costume of a Gura from a Popkala. For the most part, sheep herders. Uh, they, you can see that the man made his own pants from his own sheep, because they're woolen. <laughs> uh, they're comfortable to wear in the changing mountain climate, and they're decorated with a red and black sewn applique that is called a pajanitsa. And this is a design that. No. Right there. That is a design you can only find in the Gorowski region. The shirt is a simple, soft linen shirt decorated solely with a metal pin at the neck. That's what you were looking at. Exactly. And you see that he has a huge uh, leather belt around his waist, and we call that an Opasek Zbunitsky. It is hand tooled and studded for me with metal decoration. And it serves not only as a fashion accessory, but also a pocket for tools and money, and for defense, because if you were to be walloped over the head with that, that would hurt. Yeah. So the hat uh, is typically black felt, and is usually thickly imbued with either a fat or a butter that would make them pretty much waterproof. And so the sort of joke amongst the Gurala would be that a true Gural could carry water from a river in his hat and not spill a drink. and traditions in this region because it spans over the borders of the Czech Republic and Germany. But this costume specifically is from the Rotspark district of Bitom in Upper Schlons. Uh, so what I am actually wearing is an example of a, one, a, of a young marriageable lady would wear. Uh, the headpiece uh, is usually omitted during the day. Women usually don't wear anything. But for special occasions, uh, we would put on a thick wreath of flowers called a galanda. 
uh, which we would decorate with bits of jewelry and beading and as you can see, it looks like this. <laughs> the dress is long with an empire cut waist because the women of Shlons were very fashionable and tried to emulate the fashions of the cities and the, um, and the court fashion of the time. And the skirt is very wide and fashionably pleated with multiple petticoats that would create the appearance of very wide, voluptuous hips. I'm not sure if this is very visible on me, but that's the idea. Uh, the apron is long and made of floral printed damask fabric, and ladies would often wear a different colored fabric for every occasion. So over their lives, they would, they would collect a variety of different colored uh, aprons. And here we have Rukash showing us the outfit of a young bachelor from Schlons. The vest is made of black cloth, elegantly decorated with brass buttons and colored tassels. Um, the neck scarf is really what sort of brings him out as a young, uh, marriageable man, because only they would wear the colorful silk uh, neck scarves to show that. And the pants are of a light yellow fabric, very uh, distinguishable for the Schlons region. Um, and that is it. Thank you very much for coming to see us. Uh, and now, for a little surprise, I invite everyone to join us to dance the Polona. Anyone can do, and it used to be danced in the royal halls and castles all over Europe. So a couple of our guys and girls are going to bring, go out and grab a few of you to dance with us, and we invite you.
Oh, 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 oh,